My next guest I am a big fan of. I think he is probably the most versatile and most accomplished comedy actor working today. The things he does on the Carol Burnett show week after week are, are phenomenal. And to prove it, he is uh, the winner of four Emmys with not a bad record. Would you welcome Mr. Harvey Korman? <laughs> Now, we want to explain that this is no joke, first of all. Oh, no. That you're wearing this uh, little collar. This little collar. And to make you feel it comfortable. See, I'm supposed you're to wear mine it. while I'm uh... driving. <laughs> you really did. That's what you look like when you wear these, you see. Do you getting... have anything to confess, Nothing. Ed? Nothing. While we're here? Dear Father. Ah, uh, yes. Dear father. Is yours getting gamey? Did you get a, an alternate one to put on? Uh, uh, yeah, I had my wife suggest that I uh, get another one because this one was walking around the, uh, the room. But that's what you uh, are supposed to wear when you do what you and I did in the past what couple of months. What we did to each other. Now, they've all heard about my fall off the board and everything. Well, you know, is it right really to talk about something sad and pathetic and tragic? I mean, no, you covered because... all that in your monologue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, before before I tell you. Uh, no, the what... people are interested. A lot oh, of yeah, people I'm don't know what you. happened. Oh, I'm, I'm interested you. because oh, you, you were dumb. Oh, was I dumb? Boy, you were dumb. I was body surfing, folks. Now, uh, I was out in Malibu uh, body surfing, and it was a beautiful, lovely day, and the sky was blue, and the water was wonderful, and I was terrific. And uh, this wave came along, and I said, this looks like a good one. And I <laughs> started swimming with it, and it knocked me down. Now, I was a bit too shallow to have taken so big a wave. And it knocked me down on my forehead, and I kept going over. And I did the same thing to my neck that Johnny did. I just knocked it. It's like you hit your funny bone, except your whole body goes insta into instant paralysis. And I had no feelings of arms or legs, and I started to drown. Now it's, that's... You see? <laughs> Some guy over there, <laughs> you're gonna drown. Well, I'll tell you, it's a harrowing experience. I hope none of you ever uh, have that feeling of being totally helpless. It was like, you know, being a dead fish. I could not get my head above water. You know that cliche that we use? I you, literally could you not... Lo you lose the sense of direction also, don't none. you? I didn't know where I was or what I was. I did know that I was gonna drown because I couldn't get my head above. If I were able to stand, I would only been about waist high. Did your life flash before your eyes? No, or it would have bored me to death. That's the same. <laughs> I, I was ready for I, that. I, I, set, I, I, I set them up, you take the snappers. <laughs> no, really, I, uh, I still have nightmares about it because uh, it, it, my life did not flash before my eyes. I said, you're going to drown because it was uh, virtually yeah. a deserted beach. No one was around. And I could not get my head up. I know there was a kid way off in the distance that was also surfing. Well, somehow <coughs> this kid Saw you? Sensed it or saw me, because I know I never could vocalize help. It was all underwater. It was, oh, oh. <laughs> well, this kid dragged me out. That was miracle number one, that, uh, that he was there. I don't think I could have yeah. swallowed any more water. And he dragged me out, and then I laid on the beach, and, you know, he was, he was very uh, nice the way he, he said, Miss Corman, you want to call the ambulance? Your husband's paralyzed. <laughs> Giving her a sense of yes. security yes. right yes. off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then there was a lot of paramedics and ambulances and it's all true. And, oh, goodness, yes. And then, you know, the emergency hospital, and then the, you know, he didn't want to handle it. He says, your neck could be broken. I think you should get to a hospital. And uh, a lot of phone calls were made, and my uh, doctor was waiting at the hospital. You know who was at the hospital before the doctors? McLean Stevenson. My wife had told him about it. He was there checking the room out to see that everything was all right. I remember that. Looking at the, you know, the washrooms and checking who was in the next room. When I got there, really, I'm lying there, you know, still in my bathing suit with sand and salt and this wealth on my head and lying like this. And he says, where do you see the girl in the next room? <laughs> and you can't even move. You're like, ah. Wonderful, McLean. He told a funny story the night we were out, which we can talk about, which was crazy. Oh, I got to talk uh, about But um, they went into William. Because for some reason, they have to have your weight. And they put him on the scale, and you were still on the stretcher. And the guy says, 248 pounds. And McLean you said, I don't weigh 240. Now, that's ridiculous. McLean says, he doesn't weigh. And the guy says, what's what we got? They found out that the sand that you'd had in the shorts or whatever was still in the stretcher, and they I put down 248 pounds. It was full of sand. Say, so you mind if I take mine off? Does it, you, can you move a little? Watch, watch this, folks. My tush falls off. <laughs> there we ah, go. how about that? Oh, is that good? That does, what it really does is to keep you from making any sudden movement of the neck, right? Yeah, it's supposed to keep this stabilized so that all the n uh, nerves that were bruised will have a chance to heal. You know, if I would have heard that 
before I went body surfing, of all the accidents that do happen to people, this is a very common occurrence. People wind up with broken necks and paralyzed for life. You know, I'm not making a, you know, a, a saying a, a case that don't go body surfing, but be careful and have respect for the ocean. Wow, it's powerful. There's nothing more powerful than a wave when it comes in and takes you and throws you. And experienced people. There was a, just a lifeguard out at, uh, at the Malibu just a few months ago whose neck was broken, and you, a lot of people remained paralyzed. I was really very lucky. And you're, you're back working? Well, I still don't have any uh, feeling in my fingertips. I don't either here. Which is terrible if you're a nose picker. <laughs> You never know whether you have anything or not. Ballpoint <laughs> pen works nicely, I found. Uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll take a short break here, and we'll be back to Medical Center in just a moment. Here we are back at the infirmary. Uh, <laughs> would you notice when you go to parties and you start telling about it, people do laugh for some strange reason, even oh. though it, is, uh, it was serious? They start to like it's a, you know, well, little tragedy and comedy are close together, anyway, they say. Yeah. And people um, start to giggle. I got to say something to the audience. Uh, this may embarrass you, but, and I'm, I'm sorry that it came after the station break because we did not discuss this. I really hardly know Johnny. Um, I've, you know, been on the show a couple of times and I've seen him at parties, and I really don't know him socially. But when this thing happened, I got a telephone call from him at my home, which was really rather unusual. He said, this is Johnny Carson. I said, yes, and this is uh, the gold of my ear. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, hey, I heard about your accident, and I, I just had something similar, and I know how down it gets you. Because you do kind of get a depression with this kind of thing. Do you feel punk and down? Because when you hit the nervous system, it, it just makes everything go bleh. So he said, hey, I'd like to take you out for dinner. And I said, OK, sure. And he called the next day, and he said, uh, hey, I'd like, let's go out for dinner tonight. I said, well, I'm taping. He says, well, OK, I'll meet you over at Tanner's restaurant, you can mention that. Right. Well, I get through taping, and I walk into Tanner's restaurant about 10 o'clock, and it's crowded, and he is sitting there with this thing on, and I got my thing on. And he's also got McLean Stevenson and Tim Conway in doctor's coats. <laughs> 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 with stethoscopes and the little mirror thing. They'd, well, it was, he just, it was just a great evening. I don't really don't still believe that evening. It was hysterical. The guys... A lot of strange people kept coming up to the booth all evening. Uh, well, McLean uh, went over to Western Con... Well, he went over to the MASH set, and he got the uniforms. And Tim Conway is sitting there, and they got hammers, and they got mallets, and they've got the, <laughs> the, and the things on the head. Now, of course, they're sitting there alone, and because you were taping Carol's show, and I was over there at Burnett's show waiting for you a while. Now, McLean got the terrible idea about... After they'd been sitting there for about an hour, that the whole thing was a put on to have them sit there like two idiots. <laughs> and we would, never, and show we would never show up. And here were Stevenson and Conway sitting in Dantana's restaurant with all this stuff on, and the people are looking at him like, what is with these two weirdos dressed like doctors? He thought we were not going to show. But you were funny when you walked in. You really didn't oh, quite put it together. Oh, I couldn't put it together. And then other strange things started happening, if you recall. Yes. Statuesque German blonde ladies start coming over to them, and dwarves and, uh, <laughs> and elves I, I must and tell fairies. Them, I must tell them about the young lady, because you thought this was another put-on. Well, I, yeah. There happened to be, uh, in the restaurant, standing to one side, a very tall, Germanic-looking, you know, the blonde, blue, oh, lovely-looking girl. Germanic. And just standing there. <laughs> And just for the fun of it, because we had had a sip of wine or two. One or two. Uh, uh, Conway is still there. He called me the yes. next day and says, it's all right to go home now. They're trying to dust. He said, he said, they're starting to dust around me. Can I go home? He still has some of the spaghetti on him, too. So yeah. I said to the young lady, just for the fun of it, I said, oh, nurse, because we were sitting here with it. And she walked over. And he thinks that this is all a setup, that I've hired this yep. girl to come over. And she came over. And she says, yeah. And I said, this is Mr. Carmen, this is Mr. Conway, Ms. Stevenson, I'm Mr. Carson, no, won't you sit down and join us? Which she proceeded to do. Now they really think I've hired a bimbo, <laughs> you know, and it's going to be yaha time uh, somewhere. <laughs> I've, I've never seen this lady before in my life. They don't know that. And Stevenson, McLean Stevenson goes, when you do it, you really do it, don't you? <laughs> now I'm sitting there saying, look, if they think I did this, I'll go along with this. I don't know this girl at all. Now the funny thing was, she was from Germany. Yeah. Her husband was in the other room. Yeah. And Tim Conway kept saying, are you, you, you married? Where, where is your husband? And she said, he's in the other room. Now Conway thinks, of course, this is another put on. What would she be doing sitting at the table? <laughs> She's from Germany. She didn't know one of us. No. That's true. Had never heard of Tim Conway or McLean Stevenson or you or me. <laughs> now she's playing it like she says, I says, do you know this? She says, I don't know uh, any of you people. 
Right? Right. They think that's all I put on. And it was a girl who was there with her husband. I thought it was. And I when the husband was. walked in. Yeah. Then we knew it was reality. Yeah, but, this, but I still <laughs> this, 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 cre this cretin walked in from the other room. This is, I with still the wasn't knuckles sure. on the uh, on the floor, you know. Uh, with a very high brow, about this high, little teeny features. Then they knew. <laughs> Something left over from the SS. That's right. No, but I still thought that you still had staged it. I really thought that he had brought the Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus. And I kept going, Because there was a little, there was a, a I, midget. There were dwarfs and people. A midget came by. Well, of course, these four idiots sitting there, we attracted every bimbo in the world to them. <laughs> and this little midget came by, and he said, he says, hello there, Mr. Corman. And he, he thought this was all, I'd hired this restaurant full of people. I tell you, I thought that evening must have cost you a couple thousand dollars. Oh, whatever. What As mean? it was, your share of the check came to what? Was about eight? What do you mean, my share? <laughs> It was a fun evening, anyway. Oh, I loved it. You know, but I, I haven't heard from you since, Johnny. Yes. Well, I don't do that. I can't think well, of anything I mean, wilder to do than that. Well, well, well just, I mean... We should have gone I mean, somewhere you else. You call me and ask me for dinner, then I don't hear from you Let's for a couple of weeks. <laughs> we, we should... um, <laughs> I never kiss anyone goodnight on the well, first Well, then day. I know. <laughs> then then well, it'll be dancing and you want a <laughs> gift, and it gets out of hand. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to tell everybody, and I hope this doesn't embarrass you, that it was a I terrific enjoyed it. thing I thought for it was you to fun do. And I uh, really loved it. It took me out of the doldrums. It was beautiful. Because I know how you felt, because I'd had it for about three weeks, and you feel just... Yeah. And we got silly, and a couple of drinks always helps the nervous condition. I found I it. feel so much better after one. I really do. Yeah. It just everything comes back into focus. <laughs> a little fuzzy the next day, wasn't it? <laughs> well, next day. Let me take a short break here, and we'll be right back. Back to this word.